Guinness Open Gate Pilsner. Shop to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. What with all this coronavirus bollocks going around, um, the supermarkets have been an absolute nightmare. So I've been getting beer from round the corner, which means there's going to be some shit beer being reviewed because they do some fucking crap round the corner. You know, I'm going to find it hard getting into the supermarket, so I thought I might as well stop reviewing some of the bollocks they're selling around the corner. Um, this is one of them. Well, no, I don't know actually. I've never tried this. Um, this is the Guinness Open Gate um, Pilsner that they brewed, I think it was 2018 when this first came out. And I never tried it because I just thought, what the hell are they trying to do? Guinness have got, you know, an absolutely worldwide brand. They've got songs written about them, about their stout. And they're trying to break into the so the lager market and they've come up with this Pilsner and it's a Pilsner that uses Cascade and Amarillo hops which to me you know if you're going to create a Pilsner you should have at least one of the four noble hops in it um, what does it say on the back right first of all it's a 650ml bottle so it's over a pint a 4.5% ABV alcohol drink. Um, it says, at the Open Gate Brewery, we carry forward 250 years of Guinness brewing experience to create great tasting beers. Two heads are better than one, and this is certainly the case when we came to creating a flavoursome lager, a collaboration between two of our Open Gate brewers, Jasmine, who learned their trade in Germany, and Peter, our head brewer. They decided to make a classic crisp German style Pilsner with the extra hops, the depth of flavour you'd expect from Guinness. Alright, yep, yeah, I'll I will accept that. Let's just see what is happening. Now, as I always say, you know, this is Guinness are now owned by is it Dia Diageo, I think they're called? Diageo fucking I don't know. But it's owned by one of them big brewing con conglomerates and um, fucking hell do you know what I just lifted that up and I'm getting that you know that really horrible hoppy gone off hoppy it's not it's not light struck or skunky it's just it's what initially comes up from the bottle it's like a sulfury smell but <sighs> yeah that's gone now but it's uh, Fucking hell, that was so strong. Um, there's the cap, if you want to have a look. It is the open gate, as opposed to the St. James's gate that the address of the uh, Guinness Brewery is. This has come out of the fridge, it's cold. Um, on the nose. Not a great deal. It's getting like slightly caramel malt. Some hops. No lemon zesty type aromas that you'd expect from a Pilsner. Now I tried the Flensburg Pilsner yesterday. That was absolutely brilliant. It was really good, it had such a light touch. And that was a Northern German Pilsner. And of course Pilsner originates from Pilsen, which is in the Czech Republic. So anybody who's calling their beer a Pilsner is imitating that style. And um, I'm surprised the EU haven't clamped down on that because, uh, you know, if you're going to create a Pilsner, it should only come from Pilsen in the Czech Republic. But anyway, that's, you know, by the by. Um, let's see what we've got on the nose in here. Yeah, it smells a little bit better now. Fucking hell, when that bottle opens, it smelled like a fucking bag lady's period. 
Okay, so it smells reasonably clean and sort of slight lemon with lager malt on it. It's not inspiring, but let's see what it's like in the glass. It's a sort of a dark straw colour, loads of carbonation going on there. Head virtually non existent. Let's see what's light on the palette. Hmm. I'm definitely getting them extra Amarillo and Cascade hops on there. There's a there's a definite citrus in there. And it's not it's not like the usual le, usual lemon lager citrus that you get. Again, I know I'm comparing it to the um, the Flensburger, which was a really good imitation of a Pilsner. They just have that, I can't put it into words, that, that light touch when it comes to the malt. I think they use more pale malt, good quality pale malt, and they use proper Pilsner malt as well, or Munich malts, which give it such a light, drinkable flavour. This hasn't got that. His flavours are very subdued. There is a very, very light, fruity type of flavour to that, but it's so subtle. And there's hops there as well. There's some, again, some sort of pine hop bitterness, but it's just so subdued. You've really got to, you know, think about what you're drinking. I mean, if you had this ice cold, this is chilled, it's come out of the fridge, that was ice cold, you wouldn't really sort of, I don't think you'd, you'd get these notes. Having said that, it's not the worst beer in the world. And I do want, I know I said I wonder why Guinness are doing that. And you've got to look at the beer markets in Ireland, right? Your average pub in Ireland, and I'm, I haven't been over there in a while, but I do remember going over there and you had very little choice. Um, you had Budweiser, that was your lager. You had Guinness, which was the best seller. And then you had stuff like Smivix, which was in a bottle. I don't think I saw it on tap, which was a cross between some sort of ale, a very fizzy ale, Smivix. Um And your choice was limited. And I've recently read that Budweiser has been, well, they're not brewing it in Ireland anymore. So I don't know whether, you know, again, it's own harp as well. Harp lager, do you remember that? Excuse me, you'd get that in places as well. And harp lager is fucking shit. It's fucking rubbish. It's like Carlin and Foster's and all that other, you know, Carlsberg and all that other shit that they serve up over here. And I imagine this is what Guinness are trying to do. They're trying to come up with something that's a little different and it's got a bit more flavour that people will drink or younger people or lager drinkers will drink. And to be fair, you know, Guinness is popular in Ireland, but lager is as well. You know what I mean? You, all your old boys over there and all that and your middle-aged geezers all drink Guinness and all that. But young kids and teenagers and all that, they love their lager. And, and ciders as well. Ciders are massive over there. So I can see why Guinness have done it. And Guinness have brought out another, you know, like they've brought out some porter, Dublin porter and whatnot. So they're expanding, going from just doing stout to now they've sort of... And I can see why they've done it. You know, there's that old saying that, you know, if you, if you stay the same, just, you know, and Guinness is massive. 
But if they just brew one product, then you know they're really sort of putting all their eggs in one basket. But to be honest, Guinness is so popular in America. Guinness is massive. So you know, in Africa and as well, you know, with the foreign extra stuff as well, which is the variation on it. This, I don't know. It just it's a bit sort of obtuse to what Guinness normally do, but I can sort of see why they've done it. It just doesn't do it for me, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't go out of my way to buy it again, but, you know, if it was in someone's house and it was a summer's day and it was ice cold, yeah, this would go down, this would go down all right. I think it's better than the Hop House 13. That stuff, I think it's better than that. It's got a bit more flavour to it. It doesn't really taste like a Pilsner to me though. When I see the word Pilsner, I'm thinking I want earthy sort of bitterness from the SARS hops, which, you know, I don't care. I think SARS hops should be in Pilsner. They are originally, Urkel uses it, Budvar used SARS hops. Um, a lot of the best German Pilsners use SARS hops. It's one of the noble hops. It's one of the original hops, you know. Um, and they've used Cascade and Target hops in this, which you know, don't really come close to the flavour of SARS hops. But, having said that, it ain't bad. It would appeal to your average lager drinker, I think. You know, if they bought a few bottles of that, they'd be quite happy drinking that. Yeah. A little bit of fragrance on it, you know. A little bit of florally, fruity sort of notes. But it's so subdued, it's like... It's, it's so subtle. Um, so what would I give it? Oh, well, um, if they hadn't called it, if they called it a hopped lager, I would have got it. But it's not a pilsner. Not not in the true sense of the word. I don't think that is a pilsner. I, you know, I've just told you what pilsners I think should taste like. They should have renamed this a hop lager. And it would have been a pretty reasonable hop lager. Very subtle and not bad. But I think calling it a Pilsner, you're, you're sort of pushing your descriptive liberties. Um, I would give it a 6 out of 10. I would have recommend it. Um, if you're a lager drinker, you know, and you, you don't like your IPAs or any, you know, your real hoppy stuff. That ain't bad. And I, you know, I was saying, a hot day, coming out from work, a few of them, if, and if there's, you know, if you've got the fucking coronavirus happening and the corner shop is only selling that and you're a lager drinker, buy that. Um, I, I wouldn't buy it again myself personally. It, it just, everything's too subdued and there's better lagers out there. You know, shops that sell that will sell Budvar, as they do around the corner, and I'm gonna buy Budvar all day long, because it's a better beer, you know? But that's just me. So yeah, six out of ten, and recommended to certain people. And there you go. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>